with Rogue Deck Builder slash Gone Rogue Games. Whatever channel I'm going to re-record this on, we're going to do a Kaladesh pre-release pack opening and a deck building process. I don't know if I'll fully build the deck, but you'll go through my process of how I uh, go about building a pre-release uh, pack into a pre-release deck. So right now we are not able to host the pre-release. Hopefully it's the last one. Uh, for the uh, pandemic and then we can get back with the next set of action in-store pre-release but we are going to be doing take home pre-release packs for all those that are interested in playing so if you're in our local area here in central utah definitely come in and grab a pre-release pack and play it at home with your family your friends or however you want to do it so there's my dice we get the generic celestia our green white i guess there's blue in this dice too so the green dice for the uh, Kaldheim symbol on it and right off the bat we have the uh, Jorn God of Winter. This is one of the more more anticipated cards at least for commander when it attacks you untap each snow permanent you control So hopefully there's some snow permanent stuff you can do with it And you may play target snow permanent card from your grave or this turn if you do it enters the battlefield tapped so kind of cool ability with the uh, uh, Caldering the rhyme st staff the rhyme staff so Anyway, can be your commander either side. That's why a lot of people are kind of liking this card. All right, let's get on to pack number one. So on pack number one, uh, aggro is pretty good in this. Bears uh, seems to be in a, a, a theme for this particular set, just like it was for Zenigar. A lot of two drops that then can get out early. Uh, so we have the Fortel with the, uh, the Depart the Realm. And then we have the, the Raider, the Immerstorm Raider. Uh, discard a card, draw a card for 2-1. So there you go. There's like a, a bear that can then fix you. Geared of excess land or draw you into a land if you need it. The Doomstar Oracle. Whenever you cast a second spell each turn, you gain 2 life. That's a 3-2. It's pretty good actually by... If you're able to cast multiple spells per turn, it can actually stabilize you. Pretty decent for that card. We have the Demonic Gifts. Until under dark creature, you get plus 2 plus 0. And when this creature dies, return to the battlefield under your control. Uh, pretty decent for a, like a red-black aggro strategy. We have the Snakeskin Veil. Put a plus 1 on our target creature. It gains Hexproof until the turn. So this is just strictly better than a Ranger's Guile. I think this card is going to be actually very, very good in Popper. Uh, so the plus 1 is a counter sticking around is, is super relevant. There, if going back to like Kalid or going back to, yeah, Kaladesh, and even Throne and even Theros, they all had Zendikar too. They all had plus one, plus one matters. This could definitely go in those particular decks. Uh, so the Snakes Can Veil is a very good card. The Raise the Draugr, return target creature card from your grave to your hand, and re return two target creature cards that share a creature type from your grave to your hand for just two mana. Another pretty solid card. Uh, we've seen these in other tribals, like uh, there's a zombie one that can do this, there's a pirates one that can do this, but this is kind of cool. It can go in any tribal uh, for this card. We have the Invoke the Divine, uh, destroy an artifact or enchantment, gain four life. That is a sideboard card. We have the Dwarven Reinforcements that create two 1 1 red Berserker creature tokens for four mana, not too shabby. Um, and it goes with our other Berserker strategies. That's one of the strategies, Warriors or Berserkers. And then we have the Anul. This is a reprint in this set, Counter Target Artifact or Enchantment spell for one blue. That is a cyber card. And a Struggle for Skemfar, which is a fight card. Uh, puts a plus one counter, then that creature fights, and then you can foretell it to reduce the cost. Uh, so Hunt the Weak gets a little bit of an upside. The Rune of Speed. So these draw cards, the runes do, they give, this one will give plus one plus zero and haste, or give an equipment the ability to give plus one plus zero and haste. We have the Frost Pyre Arcanist. Costs one less to cast if you control a giant or wizards, and you may search your library for an instant or sorcery card with the same name as a card in your graveyard. And put it into your hand then shuffle your library so it's kind of cool if you have a card in your graveyard so it's going to work good with multiples has a two five body can be cast for four mana not too shabby for what like a, a black blue or a black white or a white blue control deck wants to be doing and we have narfi betrayer uh, betrayer king so legendary snow creature kind of works with a little snow artifact there other snow and zombie creatures you control get plus one plus one and they return to the battlefield tapped so pretty good card in pre-release because this is going to be a threat that keeps on coming back works with zombies and uh uh, snow creatures so yeah that's gonna be pretty decent is this a snow creature sure it's a snow creature so it actually does work with the god if we went into a uh in it to a uh black green blue shell can't even think of the the, the shard that goes with that uh crippling fear four mana choose a creature type creatures that aren't the chosen type get negative three negative three so say you're in like a berserker tribal you can actually kill stuff that aren't berserkers so it's cool with crippling fear as our rare uh kind of okay rare it's a good pretty good board wipe sometimes it can be a little bit of a 
a double-edged sword if someone else is playing the same as you. All right, on to the next one. We have the Tuscari Tusc Tusc Firewalker with Boast with XL top, of your top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Pretty good card at common. This is going to give you some residual card draw or at least card advantage. The Axe Guard Brag Bragart. Uh, untap it with boast and put a personal encounter on it. So that's pretty cool. It has this like pseudo vigilance to it. You attack in with it, untap it, and makes it actually a little bit bigger. The dwarf warrior. We have the mass vandal, the changeling, two mana. When it enters the battlefield, exile creature card from your graveyard. If you do, you can exit an artifact or enchantment opponent controls. Pretty decent. And demonic gifts again. We saw that one already. The shimmer, Dif shimmer drift veil, which helps mana fix. The stalwart valkyrie. Uh, you may pay two and exile creature card from your graveyard rather than pay this this spell's mana cost and it's a flying. So if you don't have a creature in your graveyard, definitely this is a huge upside. You get a flyer out. So you've traded with your one drop on turn number two, possibly attacked in, they blocked. This is a pretty good scenario to put out a three, two. Uh, then we have the Dusk Wielder. Uh, target opponent loses life, you gain one life. This is actually a pretty sweet card. Um, it does require you to cont continue to pump into it, but it's a way to get through some evasive damage. Um, I actually like this card, Elf Berserker. And then we have the Seraph's Packmate. Enters the battlefield, draw a card, 3-3 three, three for 3, not bad. Drawing a card, pretty pretty solid uh, card for that wolf. Uh, open the Omen Paths. Choose one, add two mana of any, col any one color, and two mana of... Okay, add two mana of any one color and two mana of any other color. Spend this mana only to cast creature or enchantment spells. Wait. Is adding four mana for three? They actually gave us a, a ramp spell? Why did I miss this one when I was looking at spoilers? This card seems sweet if I'm reading it correctly. Add two mana of any one color and two mana of any other color. So you're adding four mana. This mana can only be cast to, to, to cast creatures or enchantment spells. Okay, so you can't really like storm off for it, for but you are ramping up um, and actually fixing with red, which is very interesting with this. And then, or you can give creatures you control, but plus one plus zero until enter an instant speed. So not a bad little upside to it kind of weird they don't really work off each other ones like gaining you a net up one mana um and fixing uh, which is pretty neat for red i guess the frost speak the the frost speak yeti works with our snow creatures can't be blocked three three uh then we have the fearless liberator with boast of creating a red dwarf all right that's pretty good three seasons mills three cards return uh return up to uh, return up to two target snow permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So if you mill snow permanents, you can get them back. Works like kind of a snow archetype here. And then um, choose three cards in a graveyard. Their owners shuffle those cards back in the library. So if you end up milling a card that you definitely want back in your graveyard, that's another way to, yeah, shuffle it back in. So interesting little card. I don't know. It's kind of awkward. You really have to be dedicated to it. We have the Path to the World Tree which enters the battlefield, you search your library for a basic land card to put in your hand for two mana. And then if you spend one of each color in two, you get to draw two uh, cards, gain two life, opponent loses two life, deals two damage to one creature and create a bear. Not bad if you can get it to work. And look at us go. We got Vorniclex. We got the Vorniclex uh, monst uh, Monstrous Raider in the showcase. That is pretty. I don't know if my camera's like picking up this stuff. It seems like a little bit awkward here again. I need to fix my camera. I don't know what's going on with it lately. But anyway, the Vorniclex um, is going to have Trample and Haste for six mana for a 6-6. Six, six. And if one or more counters on a permanent player, put twice that many on each of those kinds of counters on a permanent player. If the opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent player, they put half that many on it. So it's going to work decently with our 1-1 one, one strategy. Um, uh, yeah, definitely it's going to auto-include in any any green deck that we play and whatnot. So pretty happy with that pull. So far, I'd be leaning towards a a black-green strategy, maybe a blue-green strategy. I don't know. We've, we have some pretty good red cards, though. We actually have a pretty good gruel deck going. We're definitely low on the white cards at the moment with these packs, but we got some packs to go. We have the the Carefell Harbinger, Zombie Wizard, add, add a man in your mana pool to spend on foretells or cast instance or sorceries for... It's a two-mana spell, not bad. Uh, Tormentor's Helm, plus one, one. Whenever a creep creature becomes blocked, deals one damage defending player. Gives your little evasive berserkers. If you're boasting out them, it's a great thing to hook up on things. The Axe Guard uh, Braggart got another one of them. The Wither Crown. The enchant creature has base power of zero, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life unless you sacrifice it. So kind of this like pseudo-removal. They can keep it around as a blocker, or otherwise they're losing life per turn. Uh, the Broken Wings. 
And the uh, Grim Drugger gets plus one zero and gains Menace, so another zombie snow creature. So we kind of have that strategy going for us too. We have the Run Ashore. I like this card a lot because you can choose both. Uh, the owner of Target Online Permit puts it on top or bottom of their library, and then you can turn it on that permit to owner's hand, so bounce and basically remove uh, with the Run Ashore. All right, so now we have the Vault Robber. Vault Robber says exile creature card from your graveyard to create a treasure token for a dwarf rogue. We have the Iron Verdict. Uh, deals five damage to target tap creature. Instant speed. So instant speed is actually pretty good with these, these ones. So if they attack in with it, you can kill it. And we have the Spirit of Alderguard. Enters the battlefield search library for a snow land. Reveal it and put it in your hand for a four mana. And then it gets plus one to zero for each snow permanent. So we, we definitely have this nice uh, soul tie snow uh, deck going on. Uh, we have the Clarion Spirit, though. I really love this card. It's whenever you cast your second spell, each turn you create a 1 1 white spirit creature token. That's pretty good on a 2 2 bear. Really good, powerful card. The Trickster God's Heist. You may exchange control of two target creatures. You may exchange control of target non basic non creature permanent, the share a type, and target player loses three life and gain three life. A uh, decent little card. And we have my favorite card printed, which is in search for greatness. Gonna be very tough to make this work in a pre release, but I'm actually looking at my pool. And if the curve works, it might actually be... I mean, scry one per turn is fine anyway. It's... Yeah, I think that's a neat little card. So just even pool-wise, we have a lot of green cards, so it's going to shift us toward green. Our foil here is a bond in gold. Uh, enchant permanent can't attack block. Crew vehicles and activated abilities cannot be activated. Very good removal s uh, spell. Seems like there's a lot of enchantment removal though in this set. Okay, so another Depart the Realm, return a non land permanent to the owner's hand, and we got Foretell on that. We have the Immerstrom Raider. When it enters the battlefield, uh, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. We saw that one already. The Valor of the Worthy, it gives a creature plus one, one, and when a shine creature leaves the battlefield, create a one, one white spirit creature token. We have a Changeling. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you control three or more creatures that share a creature type, put a plus one, one counter. So it actually does work with like our zombie and snow theme as well. A three, five for four mana. Another Broken Wings, great little cyborg card. A Skull Raid, discards two cards. If fewer than two cards were discarded this way, you draw the cards equal to the difference with Foretell. And these snakes can veil again, which actually is very playable. Uh, we have the Gold Vein Pick, which plus plus one and deals damage to a player, create a treasure token. That's actually pretty neat for one mana equipment to give plus one one and create some treasures to ramp up. And in this case, maybe even fix. We have the Augury Raven, uh, which is a 3-3, three, three, but you can foretell it to get it a turn earlier. And then we have the Arachno Form. Gets plus two plus a reach and has every creature type. The Usher of the Fallen. Now I really, really, really want to go into white with a boast. Man, we got this really good white strategy going on. But we also have this like this this Soul Tide that's also pretty, pretty good. Uh, we have Glimpse of the Cosmos. Look at the top of three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. As long as you control a giant, you may cast Glimpse of the Cosmos for your graveyard by paying uh, blue rather than paying its mana cost. If you would cast Glimpse this way, uh, and it would be put in the graveyard exile instead. So you can get it back with a giant. So man, Bone Crusher Giant gets some nice little, um, get some, and my card has a booger on it. I don't know if you can see that. That came out of the, the pack that way. I did not, you guys cannot, there it is. You see that? Gross, looks almost like a fingerprint. No, it's like an ink spill. Got some glue spill on it. And then we have the Carter uh, Doom Scourge showcase with when Carter Doom Scourge enters the battlefield until your next turn, creatures your opponent control attack each combat if uh, if able and attack a player other than you. So kind of a commander card. And whenever an attacking creature dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So kind of cool. And we got another showcase god. I like the bordering on this, this sucker. So we got Egon, God of Death. And this one says, it's death touch 6-6, six, six, the meaning of your upkeep, exile two cards from your grave, or you can't use sacrifice, you got to draw a card. Interesting card, it can get in there for some damage, it's decent late game. I mean, it's under-costed, but it's kind of over-costed, you don't really have to be like, having some sort of self-mill strategy to get this, this guy online. Uh, but the backside's actually pretty good. So at the beginning of your upkeep, you, you mill a card, and then you can exile a creature card from your grave, or to draw a card. Uh, pretty decent little effect in um, Limited. And we have the Forest Island, which is actually pretty good for what we're going. So still don't know, like I really like this red-white aggro shell. I think it's pretty decent with the, the spirits and the boast. Um, if we can get something to solidify that, I think that'd be pretty good. Run Amok is a card that would go in that sort of strategy, most likely. Uh, we have Wings of the Cosmos, our creature gets plus one, three, and flying. 
We have Dragger Thief. Look at top card target player's library. You can put that card in the graveyard. For th it's a 3-2, another zombie, though. Pretty cool little Fate Seal effect on it. Uh, the Grim Dragger, which is a zombie berserker, gains menace plus one plus zero. Another Snakeskin Veil. Wow, we got some Snakeskin Veil. I wonder if green-white could work well with some of these cast two spells in a turn uh, type cards. Um, we did get one of those. Invoke the Divine. We have a uh, uh, Starless Packmate. We have a Jar Jarl or Jarl of the for the Forsaken. Almost said Foreskin. Uh, zombie Cleric 3 2. When it enters the battlefield, destroys your creature or planes or opponent's that was dealt damage and has foretell flash. But it's a zombie, so it kind of works with our strategy there as well. Another Open the Omen Paths. Uh, we have Raven Wings. Plus one zero is flying and is a bird. Equipment. And we have another equipment in the form of Colossal Plow, which adds. Three white to your mana pool, and you gain three life, and that doesn't end as phases end until the end of turn, but the crew six is very tough. Kind of a garbage card, doesn't have trample evasion. No, I don't really like this card. Uh, the Notvold Slumber Mound can give you a destroy land and a 4 4 troll warrior if you destroy it. And the Frost Augur, look at the top card of your library if it's a snow card. Jeez, really going in on that snow theme and the glorious protector so more reasons to play white because it's actually a pretty good card flash flying when it enters the battlefield you may exile any number of non-angel creatures you control into the glorious protector leaves the battlefield so it, things die you can then get it out and then it's pretty good flash anyway it's a pretty solid body um for this so typical of a pre-release kit this is all over the place of where we want to go definitely i would say snow like snow white white uh or white blue blue black uh, green snow is pretty decent so far. Depart the realms, another bounce spell. Uh, the another raider. So we do have some raiders to really set us up. A other disciple enters battlefield. Your opponent discards a card, so it's on a elf cleric rather than on a rat. The guardian glade walker has changeling and enters the battlefield. Plus one counter on target creature, so it can be a two-two. Pretty cool. She'll shape shift sure. It's also could be a zombie in our thing. Another zombie berserker enters the battlefield. Up to two target creatures each gain. Plus one is your own indestructible. Until the turn, the Star of Valkyrie may be two an XL creature to get a flyer. Um, works again. This is a pretty good shell for what we're doing. The Mistwalker gets plus one, minus one until in a turn, changing one four. Uh, Infernal Pet, whenever cast second spell, each turn he plus, plus one is a counter against flying until in a turn. Uh, the Shimmer Drift Veil, again, which would work for our snow type theme. And then we have another Dusk Wheeler with a bow stability. And we have a white blue. Gates of Isfel, and just about to tap that you sacrifice it, you gain two life and draw two cards. A Rune of Might, which draws a card, gives plus one swim trample, and equipment plus one swim to trample. Another three seasons, which is interesting with some of the mill type effects that we have. And we have the green blue, really wants us to play green blue. We have the snow covered land and this that works with it. Um, so obviously, I think that these this is this is definitely our pool. There could be some like mixing and mashing here with green, white, with um like green and white going together with some of these snake veils and just protecting our threats. But obviously this is how it wants us to go. We have some for, I'm not quite sure we have enough to, to make um, the red, white work, but we have like two stalwart um, Valkyries that could actually work. We have a curving into a lot of these flyers um, that are, you know, even casting a three, two flying for four mana is not terrible, but the Raiders, we have the synergy with the Raider. Um, so these raiders can discard a card, discard like a creature you're, you're not going to be wanting to, and then you can exile it and get a you know a three two back with these raiders. Kind of a weird little strategy, but if you can just look at number wise with playables, I'm not sure we get there uh, with this. I mean, I I like the white. I think the white is reasonable. I had a great start to it. Really good flying, um, kind of spirit creating a lot of tokens type stuff, but it just, it can't hold through. There's just not enough playable cards out of the mix of both red and white. Like I said, white would be interesting and in maybe pairing with black or with green, but I think we do have a nice little snow ability going. Uh, Jordan got a winter is pretty good. Just a three, three, four, um, three mana. The backside is really good if we get the backside. So building a deck around this would be pretty decent. Um, we could actually even utilize the three seasons Possibly, I'm not sure that's where we'd want to go with three seasons, but I mean, it does have it does have even synergy with with the the rhyme staff. So what we do have going for us is a fixing too, like the 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 bark channel pathway, and we have the shimmer the veils. So both veils will work, and we even have the the rhymewood falls, and this gives us a, a good start for 
uh, finding all the stuff we need. The the trickster god of heist is pretty decent in here too. I don't know if there's anything we can exchange with creatures, um, but usually when it comes out on the turn, if you're playing this card, you're you're giving your opponent something that's, you know, it's it's a may ability. You still have two more by exchanging later on. Yeah, trickster god of heist would be interesting where we'd go, but it, this would be like um, a graveyard value based strategy is how we'd play this one. Um, after that, we'd look for cards that, like a draw type ability, would, well, first of all, any snow would work. I think this, the God of Death would go in the strategy, um, and we'd want to just, in search for greatness, would be decent for this. We play everything with snow, so the, the, the Vorniclex, of course, would go in here. Like, man, even red-white, I mean, green, green-white aggro seems pretty decent with Vorniclex. I wonder if that would be a better route to go than trying to go in this kind of like we do have a decent little plus one plus one counter strategy going with the snakeskin we got three snakeskin veils with vorniclex like this is a route we could go we got plus one plus one counters they they could work um with the the mix and i think black even worked with plus one plus one counters as well like we have this this really grindy snow kind of strategy like the spirit of the Aldergrad can be pretty big later on uh, but i think i think the smart way of going like even this arachnoform uh throwing it on a on a flyer isn't bad like yeah i think that route would be better to go um let's check out our black again and see what we're doing with black we have kind of this this sort of aggressive shell with some of these dusk wielders. Um, we have a plus one counter with infernal pet. It could go in that uh, type ability. And wondering if the snow ability would be enough. I'm I'm looking at this and I don't know if that's the case. Like if we get the the Narfi, like Narfi works with these three seasons. You you mill it, you self mill it, then you can recast it. But you do have to shuffle. Keep in mind with the three seasons, you do have to shuffle cards back in your graveyard. Um, it does ra work with Raise the Draugr, too. Like, there is that strategy that's definitely going good here with uh, the um, Snow archetype. But Blue also has pretty good tempo shell going. Yeah, I do like the, the, the tempo of the... This card's kind of cool, too, with the Changelings, the Glimpse, the Glimpse of Cosmos with Changelings. Uh, but all in all, I don't even know if the Snow route is enough to really justify what we're trying to do. And I think when in doubt, aggro out. That's kind of the 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 um the go-to. And if this could actually work, like we could play enough playables with white and white and green i think those are our two most powerful and that's almost there as well like we have as far as like the nuts and the nuts of our deck we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen we'd be getting close with like the absolute playables this three three god could just go in there it's a three three for for uh three mana we wouldn't be going for the back side of it but three three for three mana is fine um the Man, we have such good fixing though for green blue. I don't know. Still don't think that red's the right route to go, but I wonder how playable broken wings are in the main. If there's gonna be enough things with 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 flying enchantments or artifacts to hit you. We did see a lot of equipments and auras that do tend to be like decent for this. Yeah, and we do have a vandal that could also be decent. It's just it's there. And this kind of hook up the the green. Even green black still seems pretty decent too. But all in all, that's what I do with this pre-release pack. Unfortunately, it is one of those that is trying to go too many different directions. We were kind of there on the snow permanence. We were kind of there on the white red aggro. Um, but it just didn't really hit off much of anything. It didn't solidify like what this deck wants to be. And so it'd have to take some playing around with like the curves and whatnot to see what would work and what wouldn't. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this pre-release pack opening. Uh, like I said, if you are in the area, feel free to come down and purchase a pre-release pack and take it home and play it. Hopefully by the next pre-release, we can be back to actually running events. Uh, this has been Kevin with Gone Roll Games. Thanks for watching.